Hey, I'm Ryan, and welcome to Nest Hacker. So, are you interested in writing your own Nintendo games from scratch? Or at the very least, want to see how it's done? Well, you're in luck, because in this episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic NES development environment. I don't know how hard making games was back in the 80s, mostly because I was a toddler back then, but I can say that modern NES game development is probably a lot easier than most people think. If you set aside some of the more advanced tooling that's used for graphics and audio, then a basic development environment consists of only three programs, an editor, an assembler, and an emulator. The editor lets us write the program code for our game, the assembler converts the program code into a binary ROM file, and the emulator lets us actually play the game that we've made. In this episode, I'll show you how to install, configure, and use each of the programs on Windows 10. I'll then wrap up by showing you how to download and build a simple demo game that I posted on GitHub. Before we begin, do me a favor by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. After that, we'll take a look at the first of our components, the editor. At the most basic level, an editor or text editor is a piece of software that allows you to author and modify plain text files. In the case of NES game development, we use an editor to write the 6502 assembly code for the game that eventually gets converted into a playable ROM. These days, editors often come with a slew of useful features, such as syntax highlighting, source control, and debugging. While not all of these features are directly useful for NES game programming, editors can still provide a lot of benefit when developing games. Visual Studio Code, or VS Code for short, is a free code editor built by Microsoft that works on all major operating systems. Like most modern editors, it has a plugin system that allows you to extend and change its capabilities. There's a whole library of them out there that you can choose from, and there's even extensions that can help with making NES games. To install the editor, first point your browser at code.visualstudio.com, then click the big blue download button. This will initiate a download of the installation executable that will install the editor on your machine. After it's been installed, simply search for Visual Studio Code in the Start menu and execute it to start the editor. When the program starts for the first time, you'll basically see a big dark window containing a guide to getting started with the editor. If you're not familiar with code editors, you might want to read up a bit on some of its features and customization options. Along the top, you'll also see that this guide is opened up in a tab entitled Getting Started. These editor tabs work in a similar way to tabs in a web browser, except that instead of containing websites, each tab usually contains a source code file. To begin, click the X on the Getting Started tab to close it. The editor should now contain no open files and will list some useful commands below a tasteful silhouette of the VS Code logo. Let's get a little practice using the editor by making an example assembly source file. Start by using the shortcut command Ctrl N to create a new file. This will open a new tab named Untitled-1 with a little message about selecting a language in the main editing area below. For now, ignore this message and enter the following. Once you've done so, press Ctrl S to bring up the save dialog and save the file to your desktop as example.s. The .s extension is used by the editor to recognize that a file contains 6502 assembly, but right now our editor isn't fully configured to make use of it. Let's remedy this by installing one of those extensions that I mentioned earlier. On the upper left-hand side of the editor window, you should see five icons. Click the last of these icons, the one that looks like a bunch of little blocks. This will open up the extensions panel and immediately move your text cursor to the search box at the top of that panel. Enter CA65 into the text box and the editor will automatically update the list below as you type. You should see an entry entitled CA65 Macro Assembler. Click on it to open up a new tab that provides details about the extension. Anytime you're looking to add a new extension, you should take a look at the details to see if it does what you need. Further, the details will often include instructions on how to use different features that the extension provides. Also, make sure to note the star rating as it's usually a good indicator for the quality of the extension. 
The CA65 macro assembler extension adds support for the 6502 assembly language. It provides a small grab bag of features that I'll point out as we come across them in this video. For now, go ahead and click the install button, and once it's installed, close the extension details tab. After doing so, you should be back on the example.s tab. Notice that it's a bit more colorful than it was before. This is because the plugin that we just installed is providing the editor with a set of rules that tell it how to color the text for this type of file. This is called syntax highlighting, and it makes source code a lot easier to read. OK, so we've got the editor installed and configured to work with the 6502 assembly language. Next, we need a way to turn the assembly code that we write into a playable game. It's time to install an assembler. An assembler is a program that converts plain text assembly code into binary machine code. In addition to performing direct translations, modern assemblers also support higher order language features, such as macros, functions, scopes, and includes. To make games, we'll need an assembler that specifically targets the NES's 6502-based architecture. A cursory review of the internet will reveal that there are many bespoke assemblers out there, since it's a relatively simple architecture with a rather limited instruction set. But as far as I'm concerned, there's really only one good choice for assembling 6502, and that's CA65. CA65 is a 6502 assembler that comes as part of the CC65 compiler suite. CC65 is a robust, well-written, and well-documented set of tools that support compilation, assembly, and linking of programs meant to run on 6502-based systems. The list of supported architectures is pretty long and includes multiple Atari, Commodore, and classic Apple systems in addition to the NES. Installing and configuring CC65 on Windows is pretty easy, but it does require a couple of steps. First, visit the website by going to cc65.github.io, then click the Getting Started link near the top of the page. Next, find and click the Microsoft Windows link under the Content heading. This will take you to the Windows Installation Instructions section at the bottom of the page. Click the link to download the current snapshot of the tools as a zip file. The link will redirect you to SourceForge, which will attempt to rot your brain by displaying terrible ads as it annoyingly counts down prior to initiating the download. Once the download is done, double-click the file and instruct Windows to unzip its contents directly to the C drive in a folder called CC65. It's important that you unzip the file here, as we will use this location later when configuring VS Code to build NES ROMs. At this point, the assembler is installed and will be ready to use later when we build the demo project. Before we go assembling anything, let's first install the final piece that we need to get going, the emulator. While most emulators will work to play the ROMs that we build, not every emulator is really geared towards game development. We're looking for a specific set of tools, such as built-in hex editors and debuggers, that will make it easy to test and ultimately perfect the games that we make. I really feel like there are only two good options for developing NES games on Windows. You should either use BizHawk or FCE UX. I actually use both, but I tend to use BizHawk to play games and FCE UX to develop them. Roughly, they have the same set of tools, but I find FCEUX's debugger and hex editor to be slightly more intuitive than BizHawk's. Either way, the choice is yours, but I'll be featuring the use of FCEUX in this video. To download the emulator, visit FCEUX.com and click the download link at the top of the page. Scroll down until you see a link for the Win32 binary, and click the link to download a zip file containing the emulator. Once again, you'll be redirected to an absurdly horrid and comically outdated SourceForge page, where you can wait for your download as your eyes are assaulted by the needless advertisement and nauseating gray, orange, and green theme. Once the download is complete, close the tab as fast as humanly possible and unzip the file to your desktop. You can move FCEUX wherever you want, but I just keep mine on the desktop because it's easy. Once installed, double-click the executable file to run the program, and you should be good to go. With this, we have all the tools we need to write, build, and play our own NES games. The process of writing a game from scratch is a bit involved, so I'm going to save that for another video. For now, let's focus on the use of the tools that you just installed by using a starter project. The project that I built is hosted on GitHub, which is an online service for storing, sharing, and collaborating on code. It's all based around a piece of software called Git, which is a popular version control system used in the software development world. For now, you don't need to know too much about Git, 
but if you're interested in learning more, I've left a couple links down in the description. And if you really want me to, I'll make a video about it. Just let me know in the comments. To get started, you'll need to navigate your browser to the Demos Project page on GitHub. Use the link in the description to open the page and then locate the green Code button. Clicking this button will reveal a drop-down menu with a few options. Choose the Download Zip option to save the project as a zip file to your desktop. Unzip the file on your desktop and open the resulting project folder to see the project files. Locate the demo.code-workspace file and double-click it. Doing this will allow you to open the project's workspace in Visual Studio Code. OK, so now that we have the project loaded, let's take a peek at some of the files. The first file you should be aware of is the demo.s file. This is the 6502 microprocessor code that we will assemble to create the NES game. If this is your first time looking at assembly code, don't be discouraged if you find its contents confusing. For now, just understand that this is the game's code, and I'll explain how it all works in future videos. The next important file is cl65config.json. This is the configuration file for the CA65 extension that we installed earlier. The first important bit here is the executable section of the config. This tells the extension where it can find the CC65 executables that we installed earlier. The path on the right-hand side must point to the CL65.exe program on your hard drive in order for us to correctly build the demo. This might be a good time to double check that you installed the tools to the C drive backslash CC65 directory. If you take a look at the params section of the file, you'll see that we're setting up some assembly and linking parameters that allow us to specifically build NES games using CC65. The dash O lets us set the output file for the final build. So when we're done building, we'll end up with a ROM file called demo.nes. Our next step is to configure the editor so that it knows how to build NES ROMs from assembly source files. In order to have VS Code perform these builds for us, we'll need to define something called a build task. Build tasks are essentially little configurations for the editor that provide some details on how to build files of different types. For this project, we need to define a build task that uses the CC65 tools that we installed to build NES ROMs from our assembly file. Luckily, the CA65 extension that we installed comes with a helpful command to automatically generate a build task that will do just that. To begin, first open up the demo.s file in the editor. Next, we'll need to open up VS Code's command palette. This is accomplished by holding down Control and Shift as you press the P key. This will display the command palette as a pop-up menu in the middle of the editor. Type configure default in the search box. You'll see that the options below change as you type, and eventually the configure default build task command will be highlighted at the top. Press Enter to select this command, and the menu will switch to show CA65 build without config. This is a subcommand that will create the build task that we need via the CA65 extension. Press Enter one more time, and a new file called tasks.json will appear in the editor. This file contains all of the build tasks that we've configured for our project. Right now, it only contains a single task, the one we just created using the CA65 extension. You only need to configure a build task once, and then it can be used as many times as you need to build and rebuild the game as you make changes while coding. As with many things in this video, a full treatment of build tasks is out of scope. So for now, just press Ctrl S to save the file. With the editor all configured, let's actually see how to use the build task that we just made. Once again, open up the demo.s file in the editor, then press Ctrl Shift P to open the command palette. Type run build task into the search bar and press Enter once the command is highlighted. The editor should automatically open a terminal that shows the results of the build. If you don't see the same results, then you probably don't have things installed and configured correctly. I recommend you go back through the steps in this video carefully to ensure that you have everything in the right place. If all went well, you should see a new file in the explorer called demo.nes. This is the ROM you just built using your fully configured development environment. To see the results of your hard work, launch FCE UX and then open the ROM file using the emulator. You should see a friendly hello message as the game runs. Pat yourself on the back because you just configured a development environment and built your first NES game. 
Okay, so that was somewhat involved for such a basic result. But for the beginner, setting up a development environment is an essential first step, and it's absolutely required in order to follow along with some of the more advanced NES programming tutorials that I plan on releasing in future videos. Thanks for watching Ness Hacker. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post the next video on the channel. And if you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments.